At least six people were arrested at a St George's Day event held in Whitehall yesterday. Yes, the Metropolitan Police shared a number of videos on social media of people sporting the English flag, pushing past areas cordoned off by police. There you go, on our screens right now. Mounted officers then intervened with horse horses to restore the cordon that had been established. But with the increase of pro-Palestine protests in the capital, some are questioning whether this particular form of policing is an example of so-called two-tier policing. Well, the director of the Law and Order Foundation, Norman Brennan, says that there isn't two-tier policing, while the managing director of the Public Safety Foundation, Oliver Lawrence, says that there is. Well, Oliver, uh, thanks for joining us. You have the case to make here. Why do you think there is two-tier policing going on in the capital? Well, I think the problem is, um, Tom and Emily, thanks very much indeed for having me, is the fact that for a number of years now, since you know the Met has been in crisis for quite some time now, and the thing you need in a crisis to get yourself out of it ever since the case report dropped is effective police communications. The Met doesn't have that. And ultimately what is happening is the public has no understanding or perception as to why the Met is making the decisions it's making to police two different events quite apparently quite differently. And until such time as they come out and describe and provide some context around some of the policing decisions they make, naturally the public will form an opinion as to how this is going to affect and, and how they're carrying out their operational duties. Because when you watch it on a camera, when you see the results, when you see what happens on a weekend, you know, we deal with a lot of the Palestinian protesters after the fact. Yesterday, we felt the need to deal with um, sort of far-right patriots uh, at the time and quite aggressively. You, you can see a visual representation, which is quite dramatically different. And I think the public have every right to question why that is, but they don't seem to get any answers. Hmm, well, Norman, I can't help but get the impression that the police are more comfortable getting tough with the, the types of people we saw yesterday at the St George's parade there, the celebrations. They're used to that type of policing. Perhaps you can compare it to some policing of football matches and the like. When it comes to pro-Palestinian protests or actively political ones which involve foreign conflicts, they get a little bit worried and they get a little bit softly, softly with their approach. Well, look, I don't disagree with much of what Oliver has said. Um, he's absolutely right. I see what he says. You see what I see. And so do the public uh, and people on social media. I, I, I say it's more akin to careful policing. And the reason I say that is that at every single demonstration, it appears that people's anger, hatred, belligerence, division and revenge is aimed at policing. Now, policing are overseen in London by what is called Gold Command. That will be an assistant commissioner or deputy assistant commissioner up at the yard. Now, where the police, where I say instead of two-tier policing, is careful policing, is pretty much like the Black Lives Matter when they came to town during COVID. Now, I personally uh, thought they should have been far more robust. However, I do actually see that there were elements within the Black Lives Matter that wanted to push the police to the limit, so much so it would give them an excuse for all-out public disorder. And this is what the police have to balance themselves against, the Palestinian marches, for example. I personally think they should be banned. I'm sick of it. The public are sick of it. The victims are, are sick of it because they don't get the police that are policing these events. But what the police do are caught between a rock and a hard place. They can't win. And the abuse and the baiting is always directed at frontline police officers that sometimes don't know the law as well as people like Oliver and I do, old sweats. So sometimes try and make it up on the moment. And I'm telling you now that the police are leaving in thousands. Out of the 20,000 newly recruited police officers, almost 5,000 have already resigned. And serving officers, the ones that are on these streets, are phoning me and saying, Norman, I've had enough. I'm throwing him a ticket. I can't police like I want to do. The public blame me, whatever uh, I do. And for that, I'm off. Now, one day when you haven't got a police service, who is it that's going to police the streets? Who is it that the public and those that, ang that aim their anger oh, and okay, hatred? Norman, Norman, Where are you going to A word from Oliver here on that point. Is it not the fault of the police here? The police have stuck between a, a rock and a hard place. Is this actually the, 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 the fault of politicians? Uh, I, I, to be honest with you, yes, I suppose we've got to look at the funding issues and the lack of police resources. And I think that's one of the biggest 
contextual items that the public aren't probably aware of. You know, we see significant numbers of people coming into London on a Saturday in comparison to the numbers that we saw yesterday of the St George Patriots, if we want to call them that, in terms of how the police could deal with that. But that's not communicated out to the public. And, and this two-tier policing analogy grows strength every day. You know, the National Police Chiefs Council, Sir Mark Rowley, it would appear they've got their heads buried in the sand in terms of wanting to tackle this issue and being more transparent with the way that they go about their policing operations. And ultimately, that lack of communication only affects one group of people, and that's frontline cops who are out there day in and day out trying to keep Londoners safe because, the, you know, the lack of communication coming from senior management. I wonder if they're making a, a, a mistake by trying to be so transparent on social media, inviting this constant feedback from all quarters, from activists, uh, and you don't get a rounded view of things on social media, of course. Um, but thank you very much. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for on that.